I was born in New York, actually, um, and I ended up going to school for sustainable agriculture and sustainable development. It was while studying uh, about agriculture that I learned about animal farming and all of the kind of disastrous side effects of our mass agricultural system and how that links to also um, issues of climate change. So that's where I learned about largely the carbon footprint of the animal agriculture industry, as well as the really kind of inhumane practices um, in terms of raising livestock. That's also where I got really interested in food and food technology. And I got my degree and then I ended up working um, actually in different um, NGOs and nonprofits, but eventually I started working in the tech industry. I got recruited by a French corporation, so um, I ended up moving to Europe and um, helping to open you know, multiple uh, tech shop startups throughout France. After that, I went on to work for another startup in Berlin in Germany called Infarm. So over the course of my career, I worked in pretty much only startups after you know, working in just nonprofits and NGOs. I found from that experience that I really love the pace of uh, startups. I also felt like we could tackle really ambitious problems because I spent you know, most of my career working and helping to build startups. It was um, the natural solution to try and address uh, this issue by starting my own startup. In comparison to plant-based meat alternatives, what's on the market today is mostly burgers and sausages and nuggets. At the end of the day, what consumers want are products that are minimally processed, healthier, nutrient-dense, and that they have more variety and texture. It's very hard to create a, a whole textured product with just um, a pea protein isolate. It has to be extruded, which means it has to become ultra-processed with a label that's, you know, 20, 40 ingredients long. Um, you know, consumers look at that and they don't want to eat that every day or they don't want to feel guilty about eating that every single day. So what we're able to create, products that are minimally processed, nutrient dense, thereby healthier, while also having a meat-like texture naturally. Mycelium has an inherent fibrous structure and network that allows us to leverage that, um, you know, perfectly for the use in creating whole cuts. So mycelium is the vegetative root network of, um, of fungi. And so you can think of, um, you know, an everyday example of where you would find mycelium is actually um, underground. If you were to go in the forest and you're to go, you know, you see a mushroom, for example, um, popping up, then you, what you can actually understand is that mycelium is all the root network underneath. But there's also ways that you can cultivate mycelium in a way, you know, not in soil. You can cultivate it the way that we do, which is essentially like tricking the mycelium into thinking that it's in the ground or that it's in um, a tree trunk, for example. And so we mimic the environment of soil or we mimic the environment of a tree trunk so that the mycelium Mycelium grows within our, you know, very pure and clean environment, and in that way, we're able to cultivate pure mycelium. We then harvest that, and we use that as the main ingredient in our meat alternatives. By creating products that consumers can make one-to-one -one switch for, and that they love and that they adopt, we'll be able to lessen their reliance on animal-based products. For me, I hope that people will just really love the product and love the way it tastes and be able to use it in the way that they would typically use regular animal meat. I think the ideal is that a consumer can basically have a one-to-one -one switch for their animal product with our product. We're really at this inflection point, I think, in, in history. There's the industrial revolution and we're now in this other type of revolution where we can create food in extremely different ways that are healthier and more sustainable. We're at, a, I think, one of the most interesting points in history from a technology perspective, because it's really right now that the future of food is being created. So um, yes, I think, you know, ideally we're creating a product that people can use today, that they're gonna be able to, you know, not change their entire culinary tradition, but just incorporate what we're building. But at the same time, I think that we're gonna have a lot of different types of foods that are coming to market in the next five, 10 years, even more, that are really gonna change food and, and our culinary traditions. 